How's it going everybody? Welcome to the channel. This is Big Day Dave and this is the post episode 5 live stream. How is everybody doing out there? I hope everybody's having a fantastic day so far. Let's see. Just hopping on here on a little uh, impromptu stream here. Just uh, had a really, really busy day and ended up having my night free so figured why not come hang out with y'all and see how everybody's doing today let's see just cleaning up a couple of last minute things to make sure yeah see that changed over to live chat there we go and minimize perfect now now we're cooking with gas well if you're out there in the chat, go ahead and give yourself a shout out. Let me know that you're out there because YouTube does not give me a roll call and let me know how, who's out there. All I can see is that there are people. So, like I said, if you're out there, give yourself a shout out. Let me know you're out there. Let's see. We're going to wait a few more minutes to see if anybody else joins us. Like I said, this was a little bit uh, last minute impromptu. Uh, I did send out a quick shout out on on the social medias, so hopefully uh, those went out just fine. Hopefully people got uh, you know YouTube notified, uh, but we all know that uh, YouTube's not the most reliable when it comes to notifications. So hence the reason we got the social medias. Just make sure everything's in the green before we get started. I'm pretty sure. Uh, stream health, excellent, perfect. We are looking good so far. Gonna, yeah, gonna reminimize that. Like I said, we're gonna give it about one or two more minutes to see if anybody else joins us, and then we're gonna go ahead and get going we don't have a ton of stuff on the docket for today uh, really just got the little bit of farm work that we have here around our farm in regards to the kind of logging portion of the farm we wanted to in the last episode uh, for those who haven't seen it uh, we wanted to come through here and clear out all these trees over here and a couple of these ones that are really close by on the kind of road edge just to kind of give a little bit of extra room and some buffer. So most likely what I'm going to do is just clear out those trees, clear out this tree here, uh, maybe this one uh, here as well, just to kind of give myself a little bit of space. But we'll see how that all goes here in just a little bit. Minimize that. <clears throat> now I'm going to go ahead and apologize right up front. I have been, uh, I'm not going to say I've been sick, but I've been fighting off something over the past several days um, where you, you probably hear it in my voice. But if you see, hear me clear my throat or anything like that, I'll do my best to mute the microphone. So if you hear some clicks and pops and then silence on my end, that's me muting the microphone. But, uh, you know, just been one of those where I've been on the verge of losing my voice. Um, so we'll just kind of play it by ear, see how things go and kind of go from there. But... We will go ahead and get started. So this has been, uh, like I said, episode 5, post-episode 5. We started loading up. We got one full tree here on the cart. We're going to start, go ahead and cut down some more so we can, like I said, we want to just make up some space here because what I like to do when uh, coming down the driveway from uh, this direction, which is the main source of travel, is I like to come in here and then kind of come along this way because the driveway kind of shoots off in this direction then you either have to if you're following it that is um, you know kind of go off of here but what I'd like to do is be able to just make it to where it's kind of more of a straight shot going from this direction and every time I've done that I've either clipped the tree or came really really close and uncomfortable and then if I clip something like with a trailer I'll clip it and then it'll go swinging around hitting there and just it's just an absolute nightmare 
So that's what we're going to do here today is we're just going to do a bit of logging and selling off whatever uh, product we come across. We're going to do our best to get around the six meter mark, but, you know, I'm not that great when it comes to eyeballing it like that. So we'll see how that kind of goes. And let's see, just kind of clear off some of these branches. Nope, don't want to. There we go. Oh, come on, there we go. So I think about there maybe. A little bit longer. Yeah, seven meters isn't terrible. It's a little bit longer than what I was shooting for, but that's all right. All right, so we're going to load this one up first. So like I said, how is everybody out there doing today? If you're out there, go ahead and give yourself a shout out. Let me know that you're out there. YouTube does not give me a idea as to how many, or it only gives me an idea as to how many people are out there, but it doesn't tell me uh, anybody specifically. So give yourself a shout out. Let me know that you're there and hanging out with me tonight. Uh, it has been a long, long day. Um, nothing, you know, in particular about it was bad or anything. It was just kind of, uh, one of those days that just seemed to just kind of drone on kind of thing. But really, really happy that my wife and I, we finally got our Christmas tree all decorated. Um, <laughs> we're a little bit late to the game this year. And a lot of that has to do with the vacation that we both went on, um, you know, last, what was the last week? Uh, so yeah, it was just one of those that we're just kind of starting to get in the swing of things with, with the holidays and we are really, really behind. Spent, uh, pretty much all last weekend just decorating, uh, the outside of the house, getting all the lights and stuff, uh, you know, set up and, and whatnot. And I tell you what, I have a set of lights, um, that I actually got my, from my father when he ended up moving down with us. He gave me this set of lights that he bought, and these things are probably one of the coolest sets of lights. Uh, we use them now for our Christmas lights every year, and they're the programmable smart lights by Govi, I think is who uh, makes it. And these things are so cool. So you can have like traditional Christmas lights with the solid cut. Ooh, let, let, let go. Why? There we go. You know, some traditional solid colors, you can put in like different patterns. Okay, I thought, it, thought the tree fell over. You can put on different patterns, you can set it to, to blink and to flash and do all sorts of stuff. You can have it, uh, if you've got music playing and you got the receiver next to some music, it can detect uh, with a microphone what uh, what songs playing and then like bounce to the beat and all that stuff it, it's really cool it's a really cool setup but uh, every every night here throughout all of Christmas I will set those lights up as different colors different patterns different you know the whole nine yards just do everything different every single night so that it uh, just kind of keeps things like nice and lively and festive I just like it. It's just really cool. But it, well, it was really expensive when you bought it. It might not be as bad now. Um, it might have been out long enough to where they've come down in price. But they're little just LED bulbs. Um, really massive fat bulbs on the end of them too. Um, which to some extent can be kind of a nuisance simply because, uh, you know what, let's leave this at 7. Let's just try and cut this in half. I think, what, about here maybe yeah 7.1 7.7 that .7. Eh, close enough I know that you get better prices if you get closer to the like what is it six nine and twelve meter increments 
but it's one of those I'm not trying to get the greatest of prices or anything like that I'm just one trying to get it done and two um, really just kind of uh, to, to make it as, as pain free as possible because right now all I've got is the chainsaw and the front loader from my tractor here so there's really no accurate measurement other than doing it by eye you know going going with uh, with that is kind of my my ruler but uh, right there yeah perfect But yeah, we ended up getting the tree all up and running, decorated, got the lights all wrapped around it, all the ornaments and whatnot, and we ended up doing that right before. That's why I wasn't sure if I was even going to come on and do a live stream tonight, so I wasn't sure how long it was going to take us to get everything all done. I wasn't sure when we were going to be able to start and whatnot, so it was just one of those that hopping on was just very unplanned kind of thing so it ends up working out because then I can just kind of hop on and you know just kind of casually do what I gotta do because I don't have anything set up specifically because I don't have any contracts I don't have anything besides what we're doing here um, ooh, don't there we go so we're just trying our best to keep all those logs on there and I find that doing this kind of double ratchet or double strap system so you put down one tree at a time and you can just activate and deactivate one it keeps all the rest of your wood logs down and secure but it secures that one that you just added on and then you can re-secure the second one and just kind of go from there and you just keep on going through and alternating uh, the straps until you get it fully cinched down and locked down so it's not going to go anywhere because that's one of the worst things that can happen is you are getting everything all loaded and all of a sudden bloop, just tips over and then you're you know SOL and the biggest problem with that is because I've got this little grapple um, I forget what it's called the John Deere uh, it's John Deere something or other um, nope Big bag winch, yes. Because I got this big bag winch here, um, it's easy to grab onto things that you don't intend to, especially if they fall next to trailers and, and whatnot. So it's one of those that it's really good that you just take your time, make sure that you're uh, just kind of doing everything by the book kind of thing, that you're not trying to get too ahead of yourself, rush around and... and accidentally screw something up that's that's the absolute worst whenever especially when I do it, I, I cannot stand it because then it just you know makes it feel like I just waste time trying to get things you know tidied up when I could have just slowed down and did it right the first time you know and that's kind of just good advice in general is you know take your time make sure you're doing things right don't just you know haul through and try and get things done because you want them done, you know, make sure you're doing things right. Eh, okay, I mean, a little off of the middle, but close enough. I'm gonna have to get some gas. Ooh, 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 there we go. See, I don't think I'm going to be able to handle two of these logs. I don't think that this tractor has enough weight. Now, I could add some weight to it, but eh. Oh, oh, oh. There we go. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, then I can take whole logs now. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I say that, and... Now, again, the only problem with this uh, with this big bag winch the only complaint especially when doing uh, lumber and stuff like that doing uh, 
bog work like this is that sometimes when you use the straps and stuff it has a tendency to want to judder around and start shaking violently um let's see let me make sure i'm over the mark here i feel like i'm really oh no All right, I was able to grab onto it. Whew, that was close. There we go. Got everything all secured. I'm thinking maybe one more tree and try and drop it in right here. So, funny story, here lately I've been watching a lot of YouTube uh, content regarding like police body cams, and I came across this one uh, channel here today, uh, what was it called, Red Code Watch I think it was called? Now I'm going to look it up because now I'm just curious. Let's see, do 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 do. Uh, yeah, now I'm really curious because I can't remember off the top of my head. No, Red Zone Watch. That's what it is. Red Zone Watch. And it's really funny. A lot of them I've seen before because, you know, you, you get some of those that, like, really kind of take off and go viral and whatnot. Just people just being really over the top, just silly, silly people. Um... But this one here, I've found actually quite a few uh, body cams I haven't seen up until this point. And it's funny because, oh, this one's a little bit bigger. This is 22 meters. So I can actually chop this into three seven meter, oof, uh, maybe there. Oh wow, seven meters on the dot. And then... How about this one? 5.5 and 10. I was a little off on that one. Oof. Oof. Okay. That's fine now. But anyways, um, so I was, I've been watching that uh, when I had some downtime. And I tell you what, it's just mind-boggling. So, so two things. One, the sheer amount of brazenness that people have um, to do th stupid things like to drink and drive. I cannot think of a more selfish and disgusting thing for somebody to do is to get hammered drunk and then think that it's okay to just go out and drive and get in your car and, and drive wherever you gotta go. I'm sorry, but especially in modern times where Uber and Lyft and all that stuff is a thing, there is no excuse. And yeah, I mean, it's just one of those where a lot of the videos I was watching today were just just drunk people and and not even just a little bit drunk but extremely hammered drunk there was one person that was so beyond gone that they spoke english but it didn't sound like english like it was just this whole new language it seemed like <laughs> that only they knew what they were saying. Oh, and I dropped the log. Darn it. So it was just one of those. It was just wild to see. Just. Just see that kind of kind of behavior. 
And then on top of it, you see all these people who, who are again, because that was pretty much the, the main gist of a lot of the content on that channel was just drunk people. Um, or at least what I had seen up until that point. But then like you get the, the drunk and extremely entitled. And it got me to thinking, like, how have we as a society become so entitled um, just in general, full kind of full sentence stop. How has that become like such a thing? Like we think that we deserve every little thing regardless of whether or not you've actually earned it. Like just through dint of being alive. Ooh. Okay. I think this is gonna be, this is gonna be it. Yeah, I'm not gonna, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get one over here. Uh, do I wanna try, what is this way? This is an end piece. Nope, too big. I can try and get a, oh, wait, wait, wait. I might be able to strap it on to one end. Oh, hey, there's a wall there. I might be able to strap it onto an end and then get the trailer to grab it and then let go with the tractor. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe. Uh, let's see. How can I... Swing around this way, maybe? Okay, there we go. Oh, hey. Um, So we're gonna push that there. And now, okay. <laughs> Look at that! Nice. Perfect. I love it. Now let's kind of do that. All right. Now let's go ahead and hook up to our trailer. So anyways, I was talking about, it's just this kind of wild, entitled mentality um, that that people have developed. Um, I, I, don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. And so, so for example, there was somebody I was watching, and, and like I said, they had been drinking a few, but they would sat there and they thought that just because they got home, that it completely nullified any sort of wrongdoing that they got. They pulled in the driveway and it's like they... <sighs> oh, you know, I need to figure out where I'm going. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's see. Uh, up here, up here. There we go. So, looks like the sawmill or the carpentry. Which one is closer, sawmill or carpentry? Well, sawmill is actually right here, I think. Yeah, here's a sawmill down here. Spinnery. Grain mill, cereal factory. Where is the carpentry? Oh, there it is, right there. I'm gonna go to the sawmill. I think it'll be easier to get to the sawmill, go back and forth from there, and just go from there. Well, anyways, um, what was I saying? Oh, but they, they pulled into their driveway, and they got all belligerent when the cop was sitting there asking them for their ID, asking them to do tests and all that stuff, and it's like they literally thought that they touched home base so they were safe. Um, let's see, how do I get, oh wait, I think I got, oh dear, I got a car right there, how do I do this? Um, maybe, maybe, can I get back here from here? 
Okay, yeah. Okay, that'll work. So they were just sitting there just getting madder and madder and madder until finally cops like, okay, we're, we're done here. And they start putting him in cuffs. And then he starts screaming, hollering, yelling like the cop did something wrong. And the cop was, you know, sitting there saying, hey, you know, I need to be able to identify you. And you're required by law to, you know, identify yourself if the cop asks you to identify yourself. And they're sitting there like, oh, well, I don't. I don't answer any questions. I want my lawyer. It's like, okay, that's that's fine. You can have a lawyer, but you're required to do this or else you get additional charges. You know, failure to identify and stuff like that. Oof. Four thousand four hundred that was it? That whole trailer load only got me four and a half thousand dollars. Oof. Just oof. Well, that's, that's kind of a bummer. I mean, it is what it is, but oof. Wish it was a little bit better than that. So yeah, it's just that. And there was another one I saw where it, this one was a younger girl. Um, and this one I think went pretty viral, but I think it happened in Florida. I mean... A lot of crazy stuff happens in Florida, but uh, this girl was driving a Tesla, and she ended up um, getting pulled over by the cops. She then ran from the cop. The cop chased her down. She stopped again, and she got back into the car, ran again, and then finally she stops for a third time and after stopping for the third time she finally you know lets the cop uh get a hold of her not not lets her lets them but you know they finally get a hold of her to subdue her and figure out what is going on and she just starts freaking out like she didn't expect anything bad to happen and she keeps sitting there calling for her father and like the father ends up showing up and he's like, what do you, what do you expect me to do about this? Like you have, you've been drinking and, and you know, all this stuff. I can't help you with this. There's nothing I can do about it. I'll consider getting you from the jail. But other than that, you know, you're going to have to deal with it, with the consequences here. And she's sitting there just screaming and hollering like she did nothing wrong. You know, after, you know, flying through this, you know, neighborhood that she lives in. That is just one of the wildest things I've ever seen. Uh, let's see. So we're looking about half of this, maybe about there. 7.1 and 7.9. Eh, close enough. So no, it's just, it's just wild in how people's minds work. But then just to add that extra you know dynamic of how their minds work on you know when impaired like that just it just completely blows my mind and like it, it just gives me a whole respect for you know police officers what they do um i know that there's a fellow youtuber out there um rusty money uh who used to be a police officer now retired and yeah I just like I said just gig. I've always had a deep respect for police officers but just watching that stuff it'll really kind of give you a really deep understanding of what a officer has to go through in their day-to-day -day kind of stuff you know and I would imagine personally that that's probably the vast majority of their day is just dealing with drunks and and you know people that you know have been taking drugs and all that stuff i just i can't imagine excuse me Ooh, I had to clear my throat occasionally i get that tickle in the back of my throat and it starts like really start wreaking havoc and i have to just stop and you know cough and just let it kind of force its way out of my system kind of thing and I am way too far over let's 
Let's see about right. About right there, mate. Mm, come on, let's get that. There we go, right there. Can we strap it. Oh, I love it. I love how I can just. get that to, to catch and work without getting myself tangled up into it. So no, like I was saying, it's just that kind of that that next level of respect. If you really want to kind of, you know, understand why people are so fervent about, you know, either back in the blue or whatever, you know, check out some of those those body cams and understand what it is that, that cops have to go through on a day-to-day -day basis you know I'm not saying co all cops are angels or anything like that there, there's certainly some bad apples out there there can be but it's one of those that you know I'm gonna err on the side of you know they're they're people just like you and I and just you know looking to do their job and, and do right by their community kind of thing. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on, come on. Get the there we go. Let's see, so what was this again? Twenty two, so again this one has to be three. Well, I had one exactly where I wanted to be. <laughs> gotta, gotta love that. Let's see. But no, so like I was saying, it's just one of those where, you know, I I, I tend to start from the from the point of, you know, I'm going to show. Th anybody in a badge respect and then kind of go from there and it's seeing those body cam footage that really kind of cement it for me personally um, like I said it's just <laughs> after spending you know whoa uh, uh, whoa 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 Oh, whoa, 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 easy, easy, easy. There we go. Okay. Breathe, breathe. No, stop, stop. I might cut that one tree right there back. Can we get this back in? There we go. Okay. There we go. So it looks like I could get maybe one more on the edge there, maybe. Let's see. I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna cut that tree down because that's just keeps getting in the way and it's right on the edge to where cutting it down isn't gonna There we go. Then there's another one out there, another uh, body cam channel there. That one, what is that one called? That one's a bit more intense, where they really kind of go into like the deeper, darker uh, stories and tales of being an officer. 
like I said, I, I know personally I couldn't do it. I could not. Uh, Ewu. Ewu Body Cam. E-W-U. Uh, that one there, they get into like a really kind of nitty gritty. And they're actually really good about, you know, not just doing all like pro police kind of kind of content like they'll they'll even go into like you know the the dirty cops as well um actually one i would just watch was uh story what was it i, f I forget where it was but uh basically a cop was going to a scene and he ended up striking a pedestrian in the crosswalk and you know ended up you know killing the 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 woman um which you know he was lights and sirens and all that stuff and she walked out in the middle of the street even with the lights and sirens on and i and i feel bad for the for the cop you know he obviously didn't do it on purpose it was a weird set of circumstances where the there was a construction zone that uh the the woman was walking around and um you know, so it was just a, a, a tragic, you know, situation the whole way around. And when everything was just said and done, what kind of made it really nasty, like the whole thing is how they were like talking about, you know, things behind the scene. There was a, a portion of body cam that uh, it was a private conversation between two of the officers uh, I don't think one of them was in, any of them were involved, but I think one of them was like the union rep and you know things like that. And um, they just were very kind of nasty about the whole situation. Um, were very, very tone deaf. Now I get it that that's the kind of job where you're gonna use some really dark um, humor to kind of cope with what it is that you see on an everyday basis i get it but and it was a, a private conversation between two people so it wasn't like anybody was around or anything like that the only reason it got out is because that you know particular footage was you know put out into the public kind of thing um i don't know it's just it's one of those regardless of it being oh shoot i just strapped the trailer Let's see if I can. Okay, okay, phew, cool. I was worried that when I strapped the trailer, I wasn't going to be able to let anything go. Um, but yeah, no. Regardless, it was just it wasn't a good look, and and for 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 anybody that was involved in that situation, and it just made it seem like they were very cold and callous about the whole situation. Um, at least I don't know what the end results were of it, but because uh, I don't think I, I was able to finish the video in time or anything like that, so just one of those. Uh, you know, it's not all the the sunshine and roses kind of thing as well. But that channel, like I said, gets like really into some of the like darker sides of policing. Um, yeah, it is. There was one I watched that was wild ended up uh this family uh had like i think it was like 13 children um some some ridiculous number and the kids were so malnourished um and that the parents would use food to tease the kids they the kids may have eaten you know once every couple of days kind of thing that the reason that the cops finally found out was that the 17 year old daughter uh was able to escape from the house run down the street and and uh, get access to a payphone uh, it was either a cell phone or a payphone it might have been a cell phone and to to hear her talk you could tell there was definitely some cognitive uh issues um likely due to the now now mer now malnourishment there we go those are the words but um 
you know, the she was 17 years old. She had never been to school except for once in like the first grade. Um, but it wasn't like a public school. It was all private um, where like mother and father were teaching her kind of thing. It was just a really gnarly uh, story to listen to. And it had all the... Uh, all the phone calls and, and all that stuff but when she was talking it sounded like she was like like I said she was 17 years old but she sounded like she was like 12 you know she sounded like a small child and when the cops first started talking to her she like they even mistook her as a small child because she was so now mal malnourished it was just a wild, wild video and wild to, to just kind of hear everything all play out. Um, but yeah, they would they would use like food to kind of not well, yeah, to torture the kids, but as like uh, means of punishment when the kids didn't do what they were told. Um, they would buy toys and stuff, but then they wouldn't let the kids play with them. It was just a really wild, wild uh, video. It was it was just awful and heartbreaking as a father it was just oh just gut-wrenching and to think that there was you know 12 other kids or so that were going through that same exact situation and i guess what was even wilder is there was one child in particular that actually defended their parents you know saying that they loved them and you know that they were just you know overwhelmed and and all this stuff and it's like wow you know that's even after going through all that stuff that you still have one of the kids that are willing to kind of stick up for the parents and it just goes to show you just the the kind of level of what a parent means to a child you know a child I'm sorry, what, what uh, yeah, what a parent means to a child. I mean, a, a parent is, you know, in the eyes of the child, you know, they are everything. They are, they are the world. They are, you know, everything to that child. You know, they are their entire world. And when you have a failure of a parent, as much as that story there, it's just, it's gut-wrenching. It's heartbreaking. But then to, to think that even after going through all that, that there was still one child of the 13 that was willing to go to bat. And I guess they testified in the in the trial. Um, it was just wild to listen to, wild to hear. There we go. Perfect. Let's see I'm trying to decide if I want to take all the trees out of here or if I'm gonna I think I might just leave these ones kind of on the border here I might take this one out because this one's a oh no this one's close enough I might leave these ones here but these all these will go except for these ones that are right up against the edge this one will go this one will stay Huh. You know what? That's not a bad idea. Hold on. Let's see. So... This one, this one, this one. Oops. Let's see, this one will go.
this one, this one will go. Okay, I think... I think that's pretty much everything. Yeah, okay, perfect. So I think all these ones with X's on them, those will be the ones that'll go, the rest will stay. And that way we're not getting rid of all the trees here, but we are gonna open up this kind of space right here. And who knows, maybe one of these days we'll, we'll do something with this area of land here. Maybe do a, I don't know, maybe a small little, uh, a small uh, field right here might not be a bad idea. I mean, this isn't a huge area, but we've got that potato harvester and, and whatnot that, uh, the, well, I think we got, what, for sugar beets? I think it's... I think it was sugar beets, if I'm not mistaken. Where's the header? Yeah, here it is. Yeah, sugar beets. So, I mean, we could make a field right there and have a sugar beet field. I mean, it's not huge, but it'll be more than enough sugar beets to be able to process through and, uh, and do stuff with. Hmm. Hmm. And really, if I could cut out all these trees and smooth this down a bit so it's not as hilly and bumpy, maybe that'd be a good idea. Hmm. Hmm. We'll see. We'll see how things go. Certainly not going to get all that done today, but certainly something to look into. that. Alright, let's keep on keeping on. Oops. There we go. Chop this down. <laughs> Actually, another another funny story. Uh, kind of going, you know, on to a new topic now. I went to the store earlier today, and while I was out and about, <clears throat> I was walking up to the, it was the grocery store I was going to, and, uh, sorry, excuse me. Ooh, sorry about that. Gotta, gotta keep clearing my throat. That tickle, every once in a while that tickle just hits, and if I don't uh, stop right away, it's going to turn into like a huge coughing fit. Anyways, so I'm walking up to the grocery store, and, or from the parking lot into the store itself, and I... I see somebody with their engine running and whatnot, but no reverse lights. So I pay it no mind, no real mind either way. And uh, yeah, okay, that that turned out pretty good. And as I'm walking up, all of a sudden, hey, Cavalier Roy, how's it going? Hey, bud, managed to catch you in the stream for a change. Hey, I appreciate you stopping by. I hope you're doing fantastic tonight. But uh, like I was saying, though, uh, I'm walking up to the to the store, and all of a sudden, this person just starts reversing. Their their tail lights, their their reverse lights, didn't work on the on the vehicle whatsoever. And it was an older pickup truck, but they just started backing up and backing up. I actually had to slam my fist into the back of their truck to make sure that they heard me, because um, I'm like right dead center of their truck, and they're backing up into me. Thankfully, they were backing up really slow. So it wasn't like they were going to run me down. And in that moment, I'm sitting there contemplating, oh, man, I might need to, like, jump into their <laughs> into the back of the tailgate. Thankfully, it's a smaller truck. It wasn't like a, it was an, a, a big old monster, you know, modern day truck. It was one of the older, like, Chevy S10s. So it would have been easy just to kind of dive into the into the back if I needed to. But, ugh, it just wasn't, uh, wasn't <laughs> the 
evening I was expecting. At least not the start of the evening I was expecting. Uh, let's see. All good here. Hope all is good. And you're in absolutely fantastic right now. Uh, I was saying earlier how I finally finished putting up the Christmas tree decorations. Got the lights all strung up. Uh, both on the tree and the house. Um, you know, got quite a late start to it this year. But finally was able to get everything all taken care of and a lot of that is because of the vacation we went on uh right after thanksgiving and into the beginning of december so it just really kind of knocked us off stride but uh yeah we finally got everything all cleared up and done around here how about yourself how are things going with you i tell you what i'm really loving playing on uh playing on your map here man this this is absolutely fantastic love the latest update but I did, and I do have to apologize, Roy. I, I think I screwed up on uh, on one of the other maps that you've updated. Um, I think I had made a comment regarding something that happened to me here on this map and threw out just a kind of warning as a general, uh, uh, general advisory uh, to let people know. But turns out it had nothing to do with your update. It was... <laughs> It was me and how I go about loading my mods. But uh, what had happened was after the update to Maple Farm here, I ended up... Oh, no! What happened? <laughs> no! I had, like, three straps on there. <laughs> Anyways, um, I ended up doing the update, you know, right away because both you had said and, and it was nothing that you said or anything like that um but it was uh same save game compatible so i was like oh yeah the first thing i'm gonna do is update i'm, I'm looking forward to it kind of kind of thing ooh, ooh, ooh. easy 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 okay there we go now okay now we're talking anyways so I had done a harvest uh, for a contract and had like 23,000 liters of parsnips left over. And after updating it, all of a sudden, boom, all the parsnips were gone. And I and I had removed them from the silo because specifically you said, hey, you know, take these out of the silo or else. I'm like, that, that's the first thing I did was take them out of the silo and threw them out in the floor. Well, I came on and they were all missing. I'm like, oh no, what happened? And I'd gone on and done a couple of map tours and whatnot, and I had uh, specifically other map updates. I had been noticing that the parsnips and carrots and, and red beets from the new DLC uh, just weren't coming through on some maps. Some they were, some they weren't. Uh, turns out I had way too many mods loaded into my uh, save games. And specifically the factories that were producing new product types. Um, so yeah, what had happened is that after so many were loaded in, it just deleted or, or got rid of the red beets, carrots, and parsnips. And ended up removing them from the map. But I had ended up mentioning that, hey, after my update on Maple Farm, this is what I experienced thinking that it was directly the update it was it literally lined up perfectly between me updating and whatnot um so it actually is really cool that i ran into you here um if you'd like and let me know what you what you think i can make another video and kind of elaborate going back adding some additional context uh to what i said there because it has nothing to do with your update uh as best as i can tell as you can see i've got it working again uh after removing several factories that were producing things um uh, so yeah, just let me know what you what you would like me to do. I don't wanna, you know, don't wanna disrespect your your update because I tell you what, absolutely fantastic, love it. Uh, let's see, almost done for Christmas. Just the final little things to pick up. Awesome, that's excellent. Uh, I tell you what, my my poor wife, every year because she's got a really big family, she she always just beats her head in trying to get everybody all situated and good to go and now we have a kid and we've got a second one on the way i just announced in the last stream um it's just one of those that i feel bad like 
I wish I could do more, but it's like a lot of this is her family. I, I'll sit there and come up with suggestions and I'll say, hey, you know, I'll go pick things up if you need me to. But uh, just like, uh, the biggest problem is just figuring out what it is that, you know, she wants to get everyone. That's that's the biggest part. And she just sits there and beats herself up until she finally gets everything all situated. But uh, it's just, like I said, feel bad. But glad to hear that you're uh, that you're approaching the end. That's that's the one thing about uh, being an only child like myself is. You know, I don't have to, to worry about too many other people when it comes to, you know, Christmas time. It's, you know, mother, father, or nowadays father, um, my wife, my kid, and that's that's about it. Uh, let's see. Kevlar Roy says, uh, ah, yeah, the production's uh, fill type limit. Don't think uh, modded fill types would affect Giants fill types. No, it's okay, bud. No need to do anything. It wasn't uh, offended. Just made me uh, go. Wait, did I miss something? Yeah, no. And like I said, I apologize for that. It wasn't uh, like I said. I, it took me forever to to finally figure it out. Because what what I had ended up doing, and the reason I figured out that that was specifically what was going on, was uh, I ended up going row by row and activating, you know, this row figure out if there was something Oop, uh, I'm sorry give me just one second I'll be right back Sorry about that. Wife is heading off to bed, so she was looking for a good night. But, uh, anyways. Oh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, yeah. So I had gone through and I was adding, like, one row at a time. And then finally I got to, uh, like, towards the very end of the list. Of course it was the very end of the list. But, uh... I then got to a part, and I think it was at the Sugar Production Factory or whatever. It's just like one of the, the newer sugar uh, productions. And as I'm going through, I deselect it and I load into to the map, and it's like, oh, hey, everything's still there. That must be the mod. So I, you know, go through and just deactivate that specific mod and then go into another map, and then nope. Um, I'm like, oh, well, it must be a couple of mods. So I get to the next factory in the list and, you know, deactivate it and realized, uh, okay, that's working fine again. Once I finally, uh, deactivated that one and then tried filling in everything else onto the list, it then deactivated the new product types again. So it's like, oh, and that's when it kind of dawned on me. That that must be there must be like a fill type limit or something uh, along those lines. So that's when um, I went ahead and tried to got it to where I'm at now. Ooh, that's gonna be a that's gonna be a problem. There we go. Can I save this by? Oh oh oh! Easy easy easy. There we go. Okay. But, uh, so yeah, it's just one of those kind of weird kind of kind of things. Um, let's see. During our testing, uh, glad you're enjoying the map and it's up. Yeah, absolutely. I am. I tell you what, th this is by far, I I've said it, you know, several times, one of the most modular and customizable maps. And I was so excited that I finally got the opportunity to, uh, use it as one of the let's plays that I do and, and I've just been having an absolute ball like right now I'm going through and I'm just kind of editing you know and cutting down all the trees over in this corner here just so I can you know one make a little extra room on the farm that I chose because I s chose this kind of southwestern farm as my starting farm uh, I have a real bad habit of trying to clip this corner when coming through <laughs> and it always ends up working out really badly for me so this is kind of a uh update of necessity on my end 
<laughs> so, yeah, I'm just I'm I'm having an absolute ball on this. And then the uh, the additions that you that you made for the update was, uh, yeah, I, I was really looking forward to those. And I I kind of had a feeling that a lot of them were gonna start coming through to other maps when I saw the first one that uh, that came out. I forget which map it was that first came out. Um, but when I saw it, I was like, I have a feeling that this is going to come to a lot of the other maps, too. And thankfully, I was right. Because <laughs> it's like, oh, I really, really would love to see a lot of that stuff on the other maps. And here we are. But yeah, the only bugger now about missing out... Oh, you know what? This this actually is a, is a good opportunity for me to ask you. Um, the horse barn. I have a horse here. Um, and it says that root crops are accepted. I'm not seeing anything in particular, but is it just the new, uh, like red beets, carrots, and parsnips that are taken for the root crops for the horses? Um, you get that 5%, uh, efficiency or whatever the, the health for your, for your horses, uh, with the root crops when, uh, when the parsnips disappeared, uh, you know, this all disappeared as well. Um, and I tried to put in sugar beets, but that obviously wasn't accepted. So I couldn't think of anything else that could be taken in its place other than the other, the parsnips, red beets, and carrots. Um, I mean, carrots made sense to me that that would be a part of them. But is uh, red beets or potatoes uh, part of that list as well? Oh, because I'm hooked up to the trailer, that's why. Uh, I will, once I get off the road, I will read what you have wrote. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Read what you have written. That's, those are words. Take this over to the sawmill and get another five grand. <laughs> there we go. Let's see. Uh, do you have the in-game log activity? Um, I don't think I do, because I, I play on console, so I don't think I have access to the, the log activity like that. But I'm not, uh, not exactly sure. Um, like, if I understand, if I know what you're asking me for, I think it's that kind of script that runs at the top. Like, uh, I think it's, what, Farmer Klein, I think, always, I always see, has it on top of their screen whenever they're loading into maps and stuff. Uh, this is a nice yard, lots of options. Yes, I, 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 was, I didn't want to do the main starting farm because of the Let's Play series. I wanted to kind of change it up. Um, even though I absolutely love that yard and I was like, Ooh, should I? And it's like, nah, I, I need to kind of change it up. Um, so I decided to do this one, but, uh, yeah, I thought it was just a really nice one. Uh, yeah. Horses take new root crops. Okay. Uh, okay. That explains why you never got the warnings of the fill type limits reach. Yep. It, yeah. And that's, that's exactly is, uh, because I play on console. Um, yeah, it just, just kind of happened. So, I mean, it's, it's not a big deal. It is what it is. You know, I've certainly had worse things happen to me. Well, I mean, uh, in the last Let's Play series, um, that that one completely came to a crashing end because of uh, all the errors and stuff that uh, the map was generating. Um, Hills of Tuscany was the, was the previous Let's Play series. And that one I ended up having to cut short because of all the errors and issues that w that were just popping up. So, you know, it's uh, it was a bummer. I, I was really enjoying that series, but one of those that it, and it's always a, a bummer whenever you can't you know complete your work, kind of thing. But ooh, hey, six thousand dollars, nice. Why? Oh, is it cause, there we go. It's because I wasn't on the trailer. It's because I got this weight in between. Um, there we go. But yeah, so it's just one of those. Uh, no, that ma that makes so much more sense that it's just the new, the new uh, root crops. 
I tell you what, I am so thrilled that the, what was it, the Lizard Colossus was updated to accept the new root crops, but also, and the one that I ended up going with was the Homer uh, mod. That one was updated to take all the new root crops and to have all the very, I tell you what, what I really liked about it, what really kind of drew me to it was the ability to do sugarcane and cotton that just completely blew my mind i'm like yep we're, we're, we're investing in that because now we've got that homer i think it's the teradas yeah this thing here the t4 with uh the interchangeable headers so here eventually i'm probably going to invest in the new root crop headers and be able to feed my poor little horse <laughs> See, you know, I should go and fill up my tractor with some fuel just so it doesn't get much lower. I will forget, and I will have no way to to, to fill it back up. <laughs> I've had that happen once before. Ooh, that was that was a bad day. Nope. There we go. Oh yeah, I got plenty of gas, plenty of fuel. Here we go. But no, I'm really happy that you're able to, to join us here tonight because, uh, like I say, it's really cool to be able to, to interact with the person who actually made the map that you're playing on. Like, that's that's really kind of... Just a really kind of a cool experience. Um, one of the things... I've only been doing YouTube for about a year now, uh, a little over a year. And the one thing that never kind of crossed my mind is, wow, I'm going to actually interact with the people that are doing all this stuff, you know, that are creating the maps, creating the mods and things like that. And it's just been a really kind of a cool, whoops, wrong way. Been a really cool experience and getting to, to meet uh, map makers like yourself, uh, Silver Eagle was another one I've gotten to speak with on a couple of occasions. Um, ooh, <laughs> almost took out my whole tractor there. There we go. What is this? This is 22, so 3. Uh, about right there. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Hey, 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 stop rolling, stop rolling. There we go. But anyways, uh, being able to, to interact and talk with the people about uh, their work and, and, you know, now getting to play on Maple Farms and get, getting to a chance to interact with the person who actually made it, it's, it's just really cool. It's something I never anticipated doing when I first started the YouTube channel. Um, and especially a, a map that I am really genuinely... Uh, like that I'm really ah no pick up the other one that I'm really genuinely liking like th this map I think is oh what is what are you doing to me tractor there we go come on There we go. So, anyways, like I was saying, it's one of those. Uh, like I said, it's been. Whoa, 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 whoa! No, 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 no! Stop it! Stop it! Oh my goodness! If I could complete a sentence and not sound like a stammering fool, that would be amazing. Like I said, getting getting to to interact with you, Roy, and being able to. Uh, just talk with with map makers in general and just kind of get the you know either the behind the scenes or just kind of just be able to just talk in general um, you know it's just it's just a, a, a pleasure I didn't realize I was gonna have so it was really awesome that you're able to join us here tonight and just kind of you know see the 
see the progress of your map and how I'm able to interact with it. Um, if I had the talent of being able to do what it is you've done and create these kind of maps, you know, like this one, what was it, the Riverview Farms and, and the several others that I feel like you made as well, um, you know, one of the, the coolest things I would get a kick out of is being able to come on and see how are people interacting with the map and how people are just, you know, having uh, what people are doing with the work that is being done. So one of those that uh, unfortunately I'm not that <laughs> not that creative as I've mentioned many many times and uh, one of those where not something I could end up doing on my own kind of thing. So there we go. Uh, let's catch up with the chat and see what's being said. Um, I see you have the new production building in place. Yes. Oh, I tell you what, Roy, this is this is my new little chemistry set over here. I love this thing. So for the longest time, I used um, what is it? The farm production? Is that what it's called? Nope. This over here. Yeah, this one here, Farm Supplies Production. Uh, I used to use this, but I tell you what, this thing is an absolute beast. I didn't even realize it until going through, but in w the span of one month, I was able to get like 300,000, 350,000 liters worth of grass converted into hay and silage as well as getting 60,000 liters of methane. Just fantastic. Absolutely love this mod. Um, this is the first time I've gotten to interact with it on this series, so I've been really enjoying it. Uh, let's see. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Hey, Dust Bunny, how's it going? Uh, good evening, Big Daddy and Mr. Cavalier Roy. Beautiful map, sir. Uh, Roy says, hey, Dust Bunny, thank you. Dust Bunny says, Big Daddy, don't think... Uh, there's any wagon that uh, took the loose cotton however uh, Mr. Smoke 82 said if you have the Omatana's open air guard installed uh, that her wagon will take the loose cotton I have not tried it yet but thought I'd pass it on the info so that's really odd because if I take a look at my trailers um yeah cotton right there in the in the trailer there, uh, right next to cut sugar beets. So it's one of those that, and I've tested it, and it, it, I have seen it work. I don't know if I have a mod specifically that's allowing me to do that, or maybe it was part of the um, the Homer update. I, I'm, I'm just not sure. I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> uh, I just caught up to the words are hard. <laughs> yes, words are hard, and it doesn't help that I'm I'm still trying to fight off whatever it is I'm fighting off. I still have this weird tickle in my throat, kind of kind of going on. It's it's wild. Uh, Kevlar says uh, I think it's very important to get to know people who play on or with the stuff that you make, as it gives you a chance to get important feedback and see how other people play with what you have created absolutely that's that's what i was trying to get not so eloquent words um yeah absolutely it, it does offer a moment of feedback especially like the real-time feedback but uh but yeah no it's just one of those where being able to just kind of observe and, and not even if you're not even looking for feedback per se but it's just being able to see just how people get along with it and interact with it i would get a big kick out of that personally if it was you know something that i had made kind of thing is just seeing how they kind of go about and do their do their kind of gaming experience that's that to me is really cool uh sorry excuse me one second Oh my goodness. I tell you what, I keep having to mute the mic to clear my throat because it is just, whatever this is, this weird tickle just all of a sudden hits and yeah, I got to stop or I'm going to start hacking in the 
in the microphone. It's not pretty. Let's see. Dust Bunny says, uh, someone else also said the auger wagons will take it, but then again, I've not tried it either. Um, well, let's take a look. Um, auger wagons. That one does not appear. At least, oh, wait, wait, wait. So these are a couple of them. Colossus root. Oh. I didn't realize the Colossus had a root. Uh, okay. Uh, I mean, that's cool. That's awesome. Yeah, but you can see uh, Cotton and this one here, the Augur Master. That one also takes Cotton. Looks like these ones don't. So it must be certain certain wagons. But you can you saw in the trailers here how the base game ones will take Cotton. But again, I don't know if there's a mod that I have downloaded that's allowing me to do that. But, I mean, I'm, I'm happy it is what it is because uh, eventually we might, uh, might get into some cotton. I think we can do cotton on this, fee on this uh, map. I don't think it's excluded. Nope, it's there. So who knows? One day we might get into cotton. We might get into other root crops. Well, I can tell you we're definitely getting into other root crops because... We gotta give. Uh, we gotta get our horse back up to a hundred percent. I feel bad. <laughs> One of those that uh, poor Molly. <coughs> oh, it just keeps sneaking up on me. Poor Molly, the horse doesn't have a hundred percent. Speaking of which, speaking of Molly, did I ride Molly today? I did not. Oh, I'll have to get over there and do that real fast. But Dustbunny, how are things uh, going with you? I haven't talked to you in uh, a little while there. Hopefully things are going well for you. Have you made any uh, additional progress on the uh, on the new uh, digs over at your place? Let's see, this one was... Okay, so this one just gets cut in half. Well, not quite half, but it will work. There we go. Let's see, this is nice. Now that we're starting to get uh, a little bit of extra room around here, we're... Uh, able to kind of move about a little bit more freely. <clears throat> oh, oh, oh. There we go. Let's see. Uh... Roy says, uh, if the trailer is set to category bulk by the mod author, then it should take anything, including fill types, added by another mod. Okay. Uh, Despite says, the big house my son is now connected to sewer. Septic tank has been emptied and filled with sand. Oh, wow. Uh, contractor coming tomorrow to dig and pour the footings. Ooh, nice. And thank you, Mr. Cavalier Roy. Awesome. Well, sweet. That sounds like you're making some good progress. Hopefully before too much longer, you'll be able to, you know, get everything all moved in and be all up and running. Be looking forward to continuing to hear all the progress and, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, continues to go off without a hitch. Let's see. Drop it right. I am not doing what I thought I was doing. Okay. No, 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 no. What are you doing to me? I don't know 
why he did that. That's weird. There it goes. Close enough. Just give it a little bump. Feel like that scene from Happy Gilmore. Just tap it in. Just tap it in. Give it a little tap. It. Tap, tap, tap a <laughs> You know what? That, that's this is exactly what happened in the last live stream too. Just devolved into a bunch of movie quotes. We're not gonna let it happen again this time. <laughs> oh goodness. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, let's see. Dust Bunny says, uh, "LOL, Mr. Cavalier Roy, it's uh, <laughs> butt at." <laughs> uh, but you can't know that from my name. <laughs> oh, that was good. But Ed, I'm going to remember that one. <laughs> Let's see. So we're going to continue to rip these down. Let's see. We only got... Uh, there's actually more trees in this little corner here than I realized. Oh, hey, get up. There we go. Come on. Ugh. There we go. What was this? This was 23 meters of three. We want. Yeah, about right there. And about there. Where? Where? Oh, there. There it was. 7.6. 6.1. Alright, well. I can't eyeball for, for nothing. Where's my tractor? I just heard it. There it is. Let's see. Uh, oops, my apologies. No apologies needed. Uh, you can't know by my name. It's not the first. <laughs> Let's see. So, stop about there. So yeah, I need to I need to come up with some good ideas as to what to do with this little corner when everything's said and done. I might uh, might use it for additional places to mow, you know, because we got I mean we got all this grass in and around here, so I don't know if mowing is really really necessary. Oh, you know what, Roy? This is a good question for you. I know that there's some uh, I don't want to say issues, but you know, because this is, you know, technically an animal pasture, that the growth of plants and stuff like that, grass in this particular case, isn't exactly going to work out. So, like, what I'm getting at is I plowed out this field and uh, saved the game, came back in, and you can see how it's just still kind of a plowed state underneath. Actually, that's a good example right there, or in this case, a cultivated state. Um... But, and, and, how do I want to word this? Is the grass, like, is this grass, can you tell me, is this still affected by the, in this case, because I'm on precision farming, is it still affected by the uh, nitrogen, the, the pH, and all that stuff? Uh, does it change the yields of the crops when it's mowed? You know, even though this is kind of, you know, pops back up after a save um i don't know if that's the best way i can word it but that's like do do the even if it's the base game and you're you're just doing two fertilizing states and and liming stuff does it still interact the the same way as we would expect grass to interact normally Let's see. Let's get this over here. Wow, 
I'm just really kind of balancing this thing, isn't I? Oof. Oof. There, there. No. No. Come on. Oh no, no, stop. That just rolled off. Oh no, it stayed. All right, cool. Let's see. Um, it's how you set the animal pastures up to work with the realism uh, grazing mod. If you, if you were on PC, with that mod then that pasture would work like any normal field without though the field is reset okay so so it basically it doesn't matter if you interact with the with it with fertilizer or lime it's just kind of a, a preset kind of value that it'll yield am i understanding that properly I guess what I'm asking is, is going forward, is it worth me liming, fertilizing, or if I'm just, or if I'm just wasting my time with, uh, with that? Uh, oh, correct. Okay. So yeah, if it's yeah, if it's pre-default values and doesn't, and it isn't affected based on what I'm doing to the field itself then yeah i probably won't be doing that uh oh wait until you sell the animal pens at which point the pasture becomes a normal field again oh okay okay so there is the potential of making it into a field it's just at the moment it's because it's being overridden by the animal pasture okay so that makes sense i tell you what you know what Roy, thank you so much. I know I've I've asked you many questions. Uh, you know, you coming onto the streams over the past uh, couple of times here. Uh, I, I'm really grateful and thank you for for you know answering questions and being so willing to to kind of you know bounce back and forth with what uh, what I'm going through. So I, I appreciate it. I really do. And. I'm sure that anybody else who either is here in the stream with us or is going to listen to the stream after the fact, you know, is also greatly appreciative as well. Because that one there actually was a question I've had quite some time, um, whether or not these these are affected, you know, by by me doing this. Now that I know that this is all kind of predetermined and whatnot, like I said, I'm I'm likely not going to interact with them in that regard, um, but rather. I will likely do the one that I did by in the last episode. Uh, this one down here. This one will get interacted with. But these ones here, I probably won't. Now, I I will. I, that's actually not true. I will have to interact with them in some capacity could, to get the environmental score to come up. But I think that a lot of that has to do with... Um, a lot of that has to do with the the plowing and stuff they did. That I kind of tanked that plowing. Uh, I was really looking just to get rid of the plowed state that were around the outer edges. As you can see, there's still some bits here and there, but it is what it is. Not a not a big deal. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's okay, bud. Not a problem at all. Well, like I said, I I greatly appreciate it. It's one of those. Uh, I, I'm I'm certain that if I have questions, then there's I'm sure certain other people that'll be, you know, either wondering the same thing or potentially has the same exact question kind of thing. But that one helps me out a ton because, like I said, I mean, one of those I'm not gonna interact in that capacity with the field if, you know, it's just gonna not take those into account. No sense in. Spending money needlessly is, I guess, what uh, what's boiling down to. Let's see. Hey, there we go. Now we can. Uh, okay, so we got another three, three cuts. There we 
go. I tell you what, I don't know how this happens, but it's one of those, the saying, you know, time flies when you're having fun really is true. I started the stream at 10 o'clock, you know, which is really, you know, late quote unquote for me. Um, but with the decorating of the tree and all that stuff, it just was having to, you know, come start up, you know, later than normal, but it's already 1130 and I'm just bewildered with that. It just feels like time just slips away so fast. Oh, 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 there, come on. There we go. I tell you what, it's... I cannot wait to see where this series takes us and what we can do from here. Because it's one of those... With this map being... Well, I, I would go to go to bat to say the most customizable map of any map in Farming Simulator. Um, I really look forward to seeing what I can do with it. I really look forward to see where the story can take us and all that stuff. I, I'm just, I'm really excited. I was really happy to be able to, to come on and do this particular map. Um, and I've been, I, I've been jonesing ever since it's been, you know, been out there. I did the, the map tour a long time ago. I mean, it was really, with that map tour, I decided, you know what, this, this is on the agenda to be done, because I think that there's so much that can be done with it. There we go. I think this is going to be the last one before I have to take this one, because these are just, oof, that's, that's just a brutal stacking job. There we go. down whoops oops 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 there we go uh let's see uh roy says uh ah pf for that i uh precision farming for that i would mow use a weeder act like the grass roller but helps get tillage score up uh lime fertilizer spray herbicide to get the environmental score up yes yes 100 percent um so yeah, those, those, those will be the interactions I do rather than trying to worry about getting the getting everything perfect I'm, uh, for the growth and the actual yield potential. I'm going to worry about the, the score more than anything in those fields. Uh, if, the vil if the tillage score doesn't change, plow the field, reseed, and then field should work as normal. Uh, it's a precision farming bug that seems to only be affected by grass fields. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Uh, here, let's put that on. <laughs> I don't know why, but those extra straps going uh, front to back on this trailer, just, I don't know why, just like you're holding your cargo hostage. <laughs> I don't know why that is. It just it just seems excessive. <laughs> You've got oh, what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight straps going, you know, side to side, and then the two going front to back. Just is that necessary? <laughs> oh goodness. See, so we'll take this back up to the sawmill, get some money out of it. Oh, and uh, Dust Bunny, while I'm thinking of it, uh, say hi to your sister for me. Um, you know, haven't seen her on the in the uh, live streams or anything like that here lately. So, you know, tell her said hi and hope uh, everything's going well for her here lately. 
as well. Let's see. Stop there. Yeah, four grand. Okay, so now just gonna keep going back and forth. Got uh, got so much more than what I was honestly I wasn't expecting getting this much. I didn't realize just how many trees were in that little corner there. It's always surprising that once you start a task and you get into it, you realize it's more than what you originally thought it was. Like you bit off not that it, that I bit off more than I could chew, but that it's just you know, a bigger job than what you originally thought it was. With all the trees kind of standing there, you really don't get that appreciation until you until you start the work. Yeah, see, I think this is going to look really cool once this is all said and done. With all these trees kind of taken out, um, with the exception of these kind of corner trees, these ones that are right up against the, the hedge line. I might take that one out too. But this one... Oh wait, that one was... No, that one's getting taken out. I think this one might get taken out. I'm going to leave these ones all on the most outer edge here. And I think that'll look real good You know, coming from the road. You'll still have some trees and, and things to break up the sight line, but not have you know all this kind of forest here and like I said maybe I'll turn this into a little field and plant some uh, some beet crops or not beet crops some root crops for the horse I mean that'd be cool to kind of go forward let's see oops didn't mean to turn that off There we go. Again, had to mute the mic because this uh, this cough is just going to be the not going to say the end of me, but ugh, it is just so annoying. And just came out of nowhere too. That's what's wild about it is just one day I'm feeling good, all of a sudden, boom. Uh, I I don't want to say it was like a sinus infection, but it was just this weird kind of. Um, scratchiness in the throat and then all of a sudden just pow just hit me with a cough I could feel it in my chest Ugh, this wasn't uh, wasn't fun you know thankfully it wasn't anything that was you know contagious or you know something I could pass on to the rest of the family because that would have that would have not been fun, but one of those you really can't uh, prevent it once you get it kind of thing, unless you're going to seclude yourself off from the rest of the house. Let's see. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Um, Roy says, I believe I added a tree type uh, you can place down for this map as well. I just forgot to update the log when I did it. Sadly, you won't be able to place it any due to the tree limit. Added a lot more tree types even. Oh, did you? Uh, let's see. Uh, trees. Oh, yeah, okay. Ooh, very nice. Poplar, spruces. Huh, nice. Yeah. Well, I guess that means I'll have to do some forestry work and get a bunch of these trees cut down before I can start, uh, you know, putting them in. There we go. Ooh, that was, that was a big one right there. I didn't cut that well at all. go
But yeah, one one of the whoa, 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 one of the features I really like about this map is how all the pens and pastures have been customized to allow for the additional amounts of animals. So what is it? This cow pasture here will take what a thousand cows or something, like eight hundred cows. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. Um was it a thousand or eight hundred? No, a thousand. The sheep barn over there is what two thousand? Uh, or, or some ridiculous amount. Um, and I absolutely love it. I absolutely love. Yeah, two thousand sheep. You've got what a thousand chickens? Two thousand chickens. You got well sixteen horses because I don't think I've ever seen a horse pasture with more than sixteen. But it's just it's cool. I I like. Being, have, being able to have that room to grow and be able to make it something bigger, you know, and it makes sense. I mean, a lot of these, you know, pastures are really big, you know, so you got some, you know, additional room to grow. You know, Roy, one other thing that uh, just kind of dawned on me is before the update, uh, these hedges were, you know, you could actually pass through them, but now it seems like there's a collision. Was that, uh, part of the update as well? And just, either I don't remember reading it, or... That was just was something I observed, uh, when going... Th Whoa, come on, hit the brakes. Oh, no, gotta get over. Come on. Let's see. Right there and right there. Ah, ah, let me go, let me go. There we go. Ah, <clears throat> uh, do, 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 do. Uh, Roy says, uh, if after deforesting the entire map, you still can't place any trees, the hedges... Uh, oh, it didn't even dawn on me that the hedges will count as trees. Um, add to the tree limit due to the post being read as trees. It didn't even dawn on me to think that the trees would be uh, counting in the post as well. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. I mean, it makes sense. Makes complete sense that they would have to be coded like that. Um, hey, hillbilly farmer, how's it going? Hello there, Big Daddy Dave. Uh, how is your evening going? Going fantastic, thank you for asking. How about yourself? How is the family doing? They are doing fantastic. Um, actually, uh, uh, Dust Bunny and uh, hillbilly farmer. I don't think you were around in the last uh, live stream. I made an announcement. I don't know if you saw the replays or anything like that, so I'm going to re-announce it here tonight. Um, and it was so cool because I was able to announce it when, when Jody was on, and I've made such a big deal about it uh, every single time it gets brought up about Jody's wife being pregnant. Um, my wife's pregnant with our second child. So, yeah, it's things have been going fantastic. Uh, we're actually only a few weeks behind Jody and his wife. So it was one of those that uh, I, I was able to announce, you know, in the last stream. And I'll re-announce it here tonight. Um, yeah, we're, we're really excited, really looking forward to it. Um, oh, dear. Oh, dear. So, yeah, it's... Uh, been going fantastic let me finish reading uh hope everybody is doing good yes everybody i hope everybody else is doing good as well roy says uh yeah a few testers pointed out uh what the point is cutting the hedges if you can drive through them uh it didn't update the log for that you know what that's actually a really good point i wouldn't even have thought of that until uh, you just pointed that out, but no, that makes total sense. What would be the point if you can drive through them other than cutting them down, like you said? No, that's that's awesome. Dust Bunny, congratulations! Thank you, Dust Bunny. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, we're we're super excited. Um, 
this is like i said baby number two and because baby number one was ivf baby uh due to you know needed circumstances obviously baby number two same thing so we already know it's gonna be another baby girl uh so we've got baby girl number two on the way so we're we're really excited really looking forward to it um yeah just uh just <laughs> looking looking forward to it you know pray for me i'm gonna have two two daughters uh and i'm gonna have to have to figure out a way to uh turn the house into fort knox <laughs> Uh, Roy says, uh, congrats, at least uh, it's not a lockdown baby like mine. Oh my goodness, yeah, so thank thankfully both of my children were just after the lockdowns and all that stuff, so yeah, no, didn't uh, didn't have to go through <laughs> go through all that. Um, but no, hey, congratulations to yourself as well, because that would mean that uh, yours wouldn't be that, uh, that, that, uh, that much older than than mine so congratulations and uh yeah no we're, we're just we're really excited because it's like i said it's an ivf baby so it's obviously pretty planned out you know well in advance kind of thing um and like i said due to the kind of medical necessities um that's the kind of the route we had to go we were able to do the um like the genetic testing which means that we knew that they were that were they were both girls when we uh, you know, implanted them. Um, it was actually, we got incredibly, incredibly lucky with the whole IVF process. Um, and I guess it didn't really dawn on me right away as to how lucky it was until my wife kind of sat me down and it's like, no, no, you don't understand. Like we're incredibly, incredibly lucky. So to kind of give you a understanding of what we went through and, and the kind of what I mean by lucky is normal IVF when you uh, go in for the procedures and whatnot they'll put you on a, on a battery of different you know hormones and whatnot one to, to help you kind of hyper produce uh, eggs uh, to be harvested at a later date and you can get you know tens 20s like you can get quite a bit of of eggs depending on how well your body reacts to the um to the hormones and and to the kind of cocktail that they give you and my wife ended up producing four um and after you have the retrieval and and all that stuff they then go through and and the mix the, the genetics and whatnot to uh to m see which eggs mature and which ones don't and out of the four that we had um two matured the the two the one being my daughter and the other one now being uh the second baby and <clears throat> the fact that we produce so little in the ways of uh eggs and and only had half of them you know go through to viability and all that stuff it was uh, a very very lucky thing for for the two of us so i i know there's there's plenty of people out there that don't get that lucky that will produce you know dozens of more eggs than than what we were able to produce and then have to go through the heartbreak you know time and time again um of not being successful or not working out the way that they hope it would um you know so thankfully that wasn't the case with us and now looks like so far we got uh, number two on the way and the so i don't know if you all remember uh several weeks ago i kind of came into a live stream and i was kind of in a grouchy I, I wouldn't say a grouchy mood but i was I, I was basically being very nondescriptive as to how i was feeling and and was uh saying you know there was things going on in real life and wasn't getting too into the weeds or into the details um about it and there was a bit of a scare with baby number two um several weeks ago it was about four weeks ago 
now. Um, so we were very unsure that uh, that everything was going to be okay. Thankfully, everything's fine. You know, the doctor said, you know, nothing to worry about. Everything's fine. She's very active and growing. Uh, great heartbeat. The whole nine yards. So, yeah, very, very happy, very excited, and looking forward to the, the next leg of the journey kind of thing. Uh, let's see. Another cough, I apologize. Uh, let's see. Uh, three on Sunday, and thank you. Three on. Oh, wow. So, yeah, so right around the corner. So my daughter, she's going to be two in February, uh, February 4th. So, yeah, not, uh, not that much older than, than my little girl. So that's awesome. Like, I, I always, uh, you know, go on and on about, you know, how awesome it is to, to have kids and, you know, the, the, the joys that they will bring to, to your life um, is endless. It was actually funny. Earlier today, um, my daughter, for some reason, uh, she, she's, she's two, so she's starting to pick up on words and, you know, starting to, to understand and associate them properly. And my wife was heading out to, going out to the stores, uh, do some more Christmas shopping and whatnot. I think she was going to return some things and all of a sudden my wife is like can you can you grab her daughter and put her shoes on and as soon as she said shoes my daughter she goes shoes and it's this really kind of high pitched kind of squeal kind of thing because she knows as soon as she hears shoes that it means that she's getting to leave and she's going outside and she's going to go out and have fun and it was just so ridiculously cute and funny and I sat there and I kind of mimicked what she was saying. And I was like, shoes! And just kind of this high pitch that I could muster with whatever this thing is going on in the back of my throat. And uh, then she was just sitting there kind of repeating me. It was just, ugh. Kids are so incredibly entertaining. It is so funny to see, you know, the things that will get them to react, to get them to kind of... Uh, to, to kind of go about and, and get excited about, you know, so when, when, and she was doing this for every bit of like three to five minutes right before my wife and her were leaving. It was just absolutely hilarious. And it's just uh, such a good time. But yeah, no, I'm, I'm, yeah, I know Jody's not here tonight, or at least not that I've seen up until this point. Um, but congratulations, you know, again to, to Jody and his wife. Um, you know, really happy for them, especially with uh, what they were telling us uh, before that it happened to them. Uh, really happy for them. And just big shout out to parents in general. Um, you know, yes, with, with my known bias in there as well, but that's fine. Um, big shout out to parents. Without you, then there wouldn't be, you know, <laughs> there wouldn't be the future, uh, you know, that there is. So you know way to go good on you and uh you know kind of kind of keep it up keep keep up the good work kind of thing <coughs> oh goodness Let's see. So, well, it is December. It just, uh, I'm sitting there. It's like, wow, it's getting really dark really soon. And uh, then it dawned on me, oh, yeah, it's December. Of course it's going to be darker soon. <laughs> Let's see. Let's... So, you know what? I don't know why I've got this all parked down here. I've got plenty of space over there now. I'm going to move this trailer. No sense in sitting here and flopping around trying to deal with this train and hump and all that stuff. There we go. There we go. Perfect. Right about. Ooh, ooh. Drop, drop, drop. There. 
Oh no! Oof. Well. No, stop it. All right, let's let's. Ay ay ay! Let's get this moved over. No, I think I started telling a, a story earlier about how <clears throat> I almost got ran over in the parking lot at the grocery store. I was uh, I was at the grocery store and somebody was backing out of the parking spot, but they had no working rear uh, backup lights, um, so I had no idea. And then just all of a sudden, I noticed a bumper getting closer and closer and closer, and I had to smack the back of their their truck in order to get them to stop and uh <clears throat> and dive out of the way kind of thing it was just it was a really wild thing <clears throat> and then after that they kind of threw their hands up in the air like i did something wrong and it's like well one you don't have reverse lights two i'm the pedestrian you're supposed to be looking out for me <laughs> kind of thing um i don't know it's just it was wild and it kind of rolls into what i was saying earlier about this kind of Entitlement. So I was discussing earlier about how I've been watching uh, a lot of police body cam footage uh, from various channels and, and whatnot out there on YouTube. And <clears throat> was discussing this weird sense of entitlement and just how people have this weird feeling like, or at least how I, f how I f at least observe uh, this kind of behavior is like, it's like you exist in other people's world and you should be thankful for being able to exist within it kind of thing. And it's a really weird kind of thing to to experience and to, to see on a, on a very regular basis, unfortunately. Um, you know, it's just really weird in how people just in general can be really kind of crappy. To, to other people, like especially to a stranger, it's it just seems weird um, to be so rude and so um, so like I don't know nonchalant and careless, you know about other human beings. I just don't understand it. Um, like I said, I, and I, it's not like I smacked the the truck hard or anything. It was just enough to make a noise, but to you know, make sure they didn't run me over kind of thing. Because they weren't backing up, like, uber fast, but I would I would say there was, you know, by the time I had, you know, smacked the tailgate, um, there was, I don't know, maybe a phone's width apart from me and his bumper. So it was one of those, like, I don't know, should I have smacked the car? I don't know, maybe not. But one of those where, <clears throat> I don't know, it was kind of a, a reaction in the moment of having somebody like you know, almost back up into you and run you over. Oh, dear. That's not good. Um, you know what? That is probably the worst stacking job I could have ever have done in the history of stacking. I will probably take that to the uh, sawmill just so I can get rid of it. Cause oof, that's that's just that's just bad. Let's see. There we go. Let's see. Roy says, uh, I gotta go, bud. Almost 5 a.m. Holy cow, Roy. What are you doing, dude? <laughs> 5 a.m. Um, I've got to do the school run in three hours. Roy, holy smokes, bud. Yes, go. Have, have a great day. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for answering all of our questions tonight. Uh, and then do some shopping. Fun times. Oh, absolutely. Like I said, Roy, thank you so much again for coming on. Really appreciate it. Thank you for answering questions. I hope you have yourself a fantastic night or day. Oh, my goodness. 5 a.m. <laughs> what are you doing, Roy? I appreciate it, though. I really do. Uh, have a great night, and we'll talk to you again, hopefully again, real soon. Uh, Dust Bunny says, good night, uh, Mr. Roy. 
Uh, nice to meet you, sir. Hope to see you again. Oh, come on. Come on, tractor. You can do it. You can do it. There we go. Now we're getting it. Oh, my goodness. That is such a terrible stacking job. Oy, ay, ay. What was I thinking? <laughs> look, at, look at that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's that's one of those you either got to laugh or you got to cry. And darn it, I'm going to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to laugh until I smack into something and it's going to send me ricocheting all across the map. <laughs> I don't know if uh, if any of you remember that uh, shorts that I posted uh, where I was having a driver, like a, a AI, driving me from one location to the other and all of a sudden I bump into them and go flying halfway across the map right back to the starting farm where I left. <laughs> It's, it's like Gandalf, you shall not pass. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yes, I, I am a big dork sometimes. <laughs> there we go. Okay, oh, another four grand. That's not too bad. I think the game just took pity on me. <laughs> It's like, oh, he he stacked it this way. Let's let's kick him a couple extra bucks. <laughs> oh my goodness. I think though I'm going to get one more load and then we're going to start winding this down cuz the more and more I'm talking, the more this uh that tickle is starting to become more than just a tickle. So it might be, might be good for me to think about resting my voice here before too much longer. I think, yeah, one more, one more load. Oh dear. One more load and then we'll, we'll call it good. But, uh, but anyways, I was, I was starting to say how, uh, this kind of, weird attitude that's been kind of permeating throughout society here at least it seems like it to me and feel free to to you know voice what you think if you think I'm kind of off base on this or not but I don't know, it just feels like there's uh, this kind of undertone of hostility that is just kind of permeating throughout society and it's just really weird to, to kind of see you know, here's a good example. I was uh, going into a gas station. I just, you know, filled up the car, you know, full of fuel. I, you know, signed away my firstborn's, you know, life savings, <laughs> um, you know, to fill up our car. And, uh, <laughs> sorry. And as I'm uh, walking in, you know, trying to be, you know, a nice, considerate person, I see a, a person walking up behind me, uh, and I hold the door open for him, as you know I would hope that anybody else would in that situation. Well, you know they just kind of walk through like they just expected me to hold the door open, and it was just one of those not even a, not an acknowledgement, not a thank you, not nothing. It was just weird. Like I might be conflating, you know, just general rudeness to to this kind of sense of entitlement. But it, it's just, that's what it felt like. It was just like, I owed it to this person to hold the door open, you know, from, from a fairly decent distance away. And it was really just like a whole nother level of weird, like just rude. And it's just this kind of weird, self-entitled kind of, I don't know, like feeling that, that, uh, that I get like the, like I said it's just like you exist in their world and you should be happy that you get to exist in it kind of thing like I said correct me if uh, if you think maybe I'm a little off base or or if you hey if you think that I, that what I'm saying is making sense then you know go ahead and let me know because you know I don't know might just might just be me might just be my local area kind of thing but uh, it just it just seems like uh, 
people are more willing to kind of lash out at strangers and it just seems like weird times I don't know you know instead of you know having grace and and compassion for for people it just seems like everyone's so willing to kind of play blood sports with each other and I don't know. Just seems weird. Let's see. Let's get this. Oh, I'm not even, not even on the bed of the trailer. There we go. Now, strap it down. go let's see so it looks like I only have what three more trees I was planning on cutting down no two more this one and this one the rest of these I think are going to stay so yeah I think that's uh, I think that'll be good then I'll just have to get some kind of stump grinder and grind out all the all the trees and whatnot Oops, there we go. Nope, stop. There we go. So many different button combinations. <laughs> it's so wild. But what's even more wild is just when you think about just the muscle memory that you eventually start to develop after playing a, a really any game, but this one too, um, that muscle memory just comes second nature. It's wild. Like you think of just the the mechanics of raising the front loader and getting the grappler into position, <clears throat> you know. Let's see. Let's get this down, and I'll kind of elaborate once uh, once I actually ha am inside the cab. There we go. Wow, that. I tell you, it, I don't know why, but it just it crossed my mind again that Roy said it was 5 a.m., you know, his time. And he's been on for, I think, like an hour. So he's been up for, you know, quite some time. That just really blows my mind. Like I said, I, I greatly appreciate I appreciate anybody who's, you know, able to hop in, stop by, no matter what time it is. But when you're hopping in, you're stopping by at 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock in the morning. I tell you what, next level. Thank you very much. But like I was saying, the kind of controls and muscle memory that you develop, you know, when playing anything or doing anything for so long, you know, you figure just this front loader alone, you got to hit the left bumper, you got to use the right stick, you know, left and right gets the, the pitch, you know, go up and down and up and down gets the elevation, you know, it's just... And then you've got to hit the right trigger at the right time to engage the straps. And then once you engage the straps, then you got to get everything else in line. Get it down to the right height. Once it's down to the right height, then you can re-engage the straps. Kind of do, ooh, I actually cut those rather decently. Ooh, -hoo -hoo. I'll, uh, I'll take that. I'm happy about that. We can, we can work with this. Of course, we do this on what the second to last tree. You know, I can't can't be doing that. Uh, you know, all throughout this thing, I gotta gotta do it. You know, right at the very end. Now, watch the next tree is gonna be perfect. It's all gonna be, you know, it's gonna be 21 meters long and it's gonna be seven foot cuts. That's how that's how the last one. We're gonna finish it off strong. <laughs> Let's see. You got one more here and then one more tree to cut down. You know what? Let's come at it from this side. It's a little bit more open. There we go. Drop 
that right there. No, 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 no. Don't tip it. There we go. Ha! Nice. Light enough to where I was able to just throw it in there. All right, last tree. Perfect. Let's see. Let's put that there. All right, 23.6 meters. I'll watch, 21 meters, 21. Aw. <laughs> nope, I'm not going to finish that strong. That's all right, though. Not a big deal. Oh, you know what? Oh, I'll take that. Do one pass on the on the trimming. I will take that. Eight wow, eight meters exactly. Okay. Uh what was this one? Okay. That one I kinda shorted quite a bit. <laughs> Quite a bit. Oof. Uh, Inquiring Minds wants to know why you're cutting down all the trees. So what I was originally starting out by doing is I was starting out by just cutting down these couple of trees over here to kind of expand this. Because what I've been experiencing is coming in from the road here, I've been kind of hugging this side of the road because you only got this little lane right here next to the cow barn and what was happening is I was smacking into these trees and then toppling over and it was just an absolute mess so I wanted to remove these couple of trees well then I got to thinking well why don't I remove these trees as well and kind of open this area up I was thinking I could either you know make this into a into a field and I was what I was actually thinking is to for my horse here, you need root crops. And I just confirmed this with Roy um, that the root crops that are mentioned here are not sugar beets and potatoes. They're specifically the new ones, the red beets, the parsnips, and the carrots. Any one of those can be counted in as root crops. Um, so I might make a small root crop uh, field right here when everything's all said and done. And that would be more than enough to sustain the horses and, you know, get them, you know, at 100%. Um, one thing that I had worked out with Roy, uh, unfortunately, I had, I had mistaken something that had been happening on my end of, uh, of things with what was actually, or what, had coincided with Roy's update for this map. So what had happened was, for for anybody who's been following the series, um, will know that I've lost all my parsnips. I had twenty three thousand liters of parsnips, and around the time that I had updated this f map, all the parsnips had disappeared, and I had no idea why. Well, it turns out um, through a bunch of trial and error, and you know seeing if there was some kind of mod conflict or something. Turns out what had happened was that there's a limit as to the number of types of crops or number of types of products that you can have loaded at any given time onto your map. So if we look uh, here, you can only have a certain number of any of these uh, products going at any single time. And what happened is because Roy added a whole bunch of new products here all the, the pizzas the sandwiches the soybean oil so on and so forth i exceeded that limit on this map and what had happened is that because i exceeded it it actually removed all of giants's original crops from the premium expansion the red beets carrots and parsnips but i had didn't realize that at first so i just thought oh well just the update did it so in a subsequent other update that uh, I was putting a video out for, I had mentioned how I think that it's possible that if you have, you know, the premium expansion goods or anything like that, you may end up losing them. Well, I 
talk to Roy, and unfortunately I was wrong. Um, well, fortunately for Roy, but unfortunately for, for me and, and being a YouTuber, <laughs> I was wrong. Um, so yeah, it just it was a mistake on my end. But uh, So now I'm missing having any sort of root crop for my horses, and one of those that I might just work on that as part of uh, a goings forward so we'll see we'll see how that kind of turns out I think there we go perfect now see that that is a much better stacking right there I'm very happy about this See, yeah, look at that. It's like I actually know what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, goodness. Now, see, what I'm really curious about is after I come back, how is this all going to look from the road? Because before it looked like it looked really nice, and I was kind of worried about by removing all these, is that going to take away that kind of aesthetic, that little curbside appeal? Um, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, let's pull over here. I just saw something pop up out of the corner of my eye, but I can't read it just yet, or else I'm going to drive like I'm in GTA. Um, let's see. Is that crop limit related to consoles only? I don't think so. Um, so what Roy was saying is that if... I was able to see the the logs um, it would have warned me that I was approaching the limits and being able to view logs is specifically a, a, a PC Mac uh, ability kind of thing so to me it seems like there's just a hard limit as to the number of uh, types of, of productions, types of crops, all that stuff that you can have activated at any given point. Um, and unfortunately, I think what had happened, or the vast majority of it, um, I had installed a ton of Zettelzok mods, um, which anybody who's familiar with Zettelzok knows, you know, they have tons of different production points, tons of different factories that have all sorts of different products and, and all that stuff um, so it was between <clears throat> it was between a lot of those mods I ended up removing a ton of different productions and factories um, that I had installed as kind of placeholders it wasn't it was something I was interested in potentially doing but when everything was said and done just wasn't really worth hanging on to in the end so not uh, not a huge deal with deleting them and not something that I think is going to be too huge a loss. And I ended up freeing up some extra space on uh, on my console, which, you know, is always a good thing. I was at like 80-something percent with my mods. Uh, now I think I'm down to 76, which still... Oh, yeah, let's see. That does look... That does look all right, I think. Yeah, I think that's going to be all right. You can see the see the farm a little bit more clearly, but you still have those kind of spindly little pole trees right on the uh, right on the corner of the lot. I think that would be nice. Now I just need to cut out some of these uh, stumps and be good to go. Excellent. I think I'm going to park this right here. I think this will be a good spot. Uh, nope. There we go. Excellent. Oh, I'm happy. I am very, very happy. Now... Disconnect all this stuff and put it all away. go I need to get a power washer or something because 
My stuff is dirty. Holy smokes. There we go. All right, check it out. I think that uh, I think that's gonna be all right. Still have these kind of outer perimeter trees. Can make a small field or you know plant some grass right here and have more grass to to mow. But, I mean that's that's not a bad bad size field. Oh, I was gonna cut down that. Oh, I was gonna cut down a couple more trees. Eee. You know what? That's all right though. I can leave those. Can I, can I delete? Can I take that out? I don't think I can delete that. Oh, well, not a, whoops, not a big deal. But no, that was a good amount of work for a couple of hours there. But yeah, like I said, I think, uh, I think we're going to start wrapping this up because... Oh, no. Can't wrap it up just yet. Gotta give my shout-outs. So, I will uh, I will muster through this really quickly because of the voice. But want to give a shout-out to all my Tier 2 channel members. Thank you so much, Mark K., for being a Tier 2 member. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. And that's it. That's what we got right now, which is fine. Uh, if you are interested in becoming a channel member, please go ahead and check out the Join uh button and the main channel page or there's a link in the description uh of this live stream uh 99 cents a month for tier ones uh 4.99 for tier twos and you get additional perks to the channel such as custom badges custom emojis you get early access to edited content which is the let's play series and the uh shorts you also get the shout outs if you're a tier two. So every single live stream, you can get a shout out. So thank you again very, very much. I greatly appreciate every single person that's subscribed to the channel, that's a member to the channel, tier one, tier two, doesn't matter. Greatly, greatly appreciate you. Oh, uh, also want to throw out. Um, nope, actually, that's 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 fine. Don't need to. Don't need to say that part. Anyways, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and wind it down from here. I greatly appreciate every single one of you for hopping on tonight. I know it was kind of impromptu, last minute kind of stuff, but uh, greatly appreciate it. Roy, thank you for hopping on. Dust Bunny, thank you for hopping on. Hillbilly Farmer, thank you also for hopping on. Uh, greatly appreciate every single one of you. I hope everybody has a fantastic night, day, weekend. Actually, you know what? Let me go ahead and just do my sign-off real quick. I hope you enjoyed the live stream. If you did, please show me by liking, sharing, subscribing, following, commenting, doing all the things the algorithms enjoy you doing that shows you're engaged with this channel, enjoying the content. And that being said, I hope you all have a fantastic day, night, evening, wherever you are in the world. Take care. Oh, and I just saw your message there, Dust Money. I will absolutely say hello to the missus, and I will also pass along your congratulations. Thank you all again so much. Take care. Thank you.